In this video, we're going to make the article detail page responsive, meaning we're going to take advantage of the latest Figma features and turn this page into a full responsive layout so that it can be prepared for tablet and mobile designs. We're going to be taking advantage of these two components that we have created in previous episodes of designing a website in Figma. Uh, so those are the footer section responsive and the header section responsive. Both of these are fully responsive, as you can see on the screen. And if you'd like to find out how I made this work, how I made this header and footer fully responsive, uh, go and watch the previous episodes of designing a website in Figma. Let's just take these two and place them right here because we're going to be needing them. So the thing is, this layout uses the old versions of these components. So when I resize this, nothing happens, right? And that is no surprise because we haven't specified any responsive behavior. So we need to do that. First of all, let me select the main auto layout and set its width to or constraints to left and right. This ensures that when we actually resize this, this is going to be resized alongside with it. Now let's just duplicate this page um, because we're going to be making a lot of changes and I want to keep a backup of this uh, page just in case. So let me actually duplicate this. Let's call this page article detail underscore responsive. Here's what, what, what's going to happen. I'm going to swap an instance of this footer component. So I'm going to select the footer section and then go here to select the footer section responsive. This is going to basically uh, paste this version of the footer in here, which means that it's going to be fully responsive, right? You can see it is. And then additionally, I am going to do the same with the header. I'm going to swap that header with the header underscore responsive, which again is going to make sure this is going to happen when we resize the page. So when we now take the main auto layout and resize it, this is what's going to happen. As you can see, we do get some responsive behavior, especially in the footer section. Uh, but the rest of, of this layout kind of doesn't comply with what we need. Um, so to fix that, first of all, as you can see, we have the article container set to fix. And in order to make this responsive, we need to actually make it fill container. So let's go to frame and then under horizontal resizing, I'm going to set this one to fill container. And then this happens, right? It fills up the whole screen. Of course, that's not what we need. So we need to think about how we can make this, you know, not this large. So we want to make this responsive. Of course, we want to make sure that it respects the parent element in terms of resizing. But we also want to set a limit to its width, which means fortunately, there is a Figma feature specifically for that. And that's the maximum width. So we're going to be setting a maximum width to this element and the maximum width is going to be precisely this. And if you have watched the previous episodes of designing a website in Figma, you know that we were using a variable system, which means that we have a specific name and value for this width. And as you can see, it's going to be six columns. So let me select this element again. That's article container. Then go to width, use this drop down and add a maximum width. When I do that, I get this new form field that allows me to type in the maximum width of this element. But we're going to, of course, apply variable. Let me just again use the drop down again, apply a variable. And this variable is going to be under the width section. If you want to know and find out how we created this system of variables, go and check out my video on variables. We know that this is going to be six columns. So let me just click six. And as you can see, this is going to constrain the maximum width of this element to six columns. That's precisely what we need. So when I now resize this, you can see how it responds to the overall width of the page, and uh, but it doesn't expand above this width. That's precisely what we need. So let me continue. Uh, we also have a responsive header, but uh, as you can see, it doesn't do anything right now. So it's, it's kind of uh, keeping its size. So how do we change that? Well, we need to make sure that this also corresponds to the size of the parent element. And that would be going to constraints because the master frame of this page is a regular frame. It's not an auto layout. So this means that we're going to be using constraints instead of horizontal adjustments. So let me go to constraints and set that to left and right. And actually, as you can see, I cannot do that 
And I think the reason is we have a fixed position on this element, but I believe that we can actually make this work by making this sticky. So let's just go to prototype with this component selected and let me set sticky, stop at top edge. And this should ensure that we're gonna be able to set the constraints to left and right, which now means that we can actually do this, right? So as you can see, this header is becoming responsive and alongside with this, what's happening here, it's almost there, right? So that's really good. I'm just going to add a flow starting point, which is gonna be article detail responsive. And then I'm gonna go over here to be easily able to access uh, this specific page with this specific behavior. So let me select this flow, that's article detail responsive. I'm just checking if the actual header is, uh, you know, sticky, right? So it stays at the top edge. And let's check what happens if we actually resize this. We get a shrunk version with the responsive header menu and everything, and also this gets basically responsified, but not really, right? There are some flaws that we're gonna fix right now. So we do have this working, but as you can see, if we actually resize this, then there's no, no padding on the left side. And that looks kind of weird. I mean, the content being um, expanded all the way to the edges, that's not really what, you know, what happens usually. And so let me just select the content section and actually add a small padding on the left and right side. And again, we're gonna use our variable system. And with this variable system, I'm gonna be uh, adding a small padding. So spacing small on the left and right side, which is gonna basically make this happen, right? And this looks far more natural and actually what you can see on you know, various mobile and tablet websites. So we, we added that, that's great. And then we need to also deal with uh, this situation here. So as you can see, if we actually resize this below a certain point, this simply refuses to do anything. So that is an issue, of course. We need to make that work. So let me select this articles container and let me also add a wrap attribute to this auto layout, which means that now they should stack below each other. But this is not enough. We need to also set a maximum width to this section. So add maximum width. And this maximum width is going to be again with a variable. It's going to be 12 columns again, and it is going to be then set to fill container. So we basically, similar to what we did here, we actually need to make sure that this respects the parent element uh, size, but at the same time, it doesn't expand beyond a certain point. That's what's happening right now, that's awesome. Additionally, what we need to do is set all of these individual elements to fill container as well. So let me set to this to fill container. And now let's see what happens. So if I resize this, you can see that basically this happens, which is not bad, but uh, we want to make this responsive and this really isn't responsive. We need to make sure that this actually, you know, starts to stack below each other from a certain point. Uh, but what exactly is this certain point? Personally, I think it doesn't really make sense for these articles to be any smaller than approximately this value. So that would mean 210 points. So we again need to make sure that these have a maximum width, or sorry, they have a minimum width. So this minimum width, I'm gonna again add a minimum width and let's see if we have a variable for that. So we actually don't. This isn't two or three columns. So we're gonna use a manual 210, I believe that was, um, value. So that's gonna be the minimum width. And now if we resize this from a certain size, this actually is gonna start stacking uh, below each other. So that's great. But at the same time, um, I don't think we need this behavior, right? I think we need to make this consistent. So why don't we actually add a maximum width to these as well? And the maximum width would be 270, which is three columns. So let's add a maximum width. And again, I'm gonna apply a variable and it's gonna be three, right? So now this is the maximum width of these elements. So when I resize this whole page again, this is what's gonna happen. If it reaches below this value, then it's gonna start breaking onto a new line. But uh, additionally, it's not gonna be stretched all the way across all these three articles that are above this one. It's just gonna maintain a maximum width 
And I think that produces a more natural behavior of what you would actually expect uh, with this um, with this element so and then we also need to add spacing as well so let's go to variables again on the left and right padding horizontal padding on this related article section and also here let me add a small spacing on the left and right so if we now resize this we should get a tiny margin which is i think really good and also consistent with these uh these paddings so yeah and i also think that we could again take this articles container and actually make sure it's centered so align top center so that when we resize this again let me check uh it actually yeah i think this is preferable to think we can make that work okay so let's Recap, let's actually recap what we have. When I'm on the desktop version and start shrinking this page, then of course I'm gonna get a tablet tablet menu and then uh, these are gonna start getting you know squeezed a little bit uh, then they are gonna start breaking onto a new line and also the footer is cooperating which means that uh, all these elements right now are responsive. If I go further, then this is getting to a mobile size. As you can see, the content is getting squeezed, um, then these related articles as well, and the footer as well. So everything is getting responsive. Then we get you know, a break onto, you know, into one column, four rows in this section. So that's great. It is now fully responsive. So the next step would probably be when we make this responsive like that, uh, then most likely just place a tablet version right here. I don't know which specific value is best for tablet. More than happy to be advised on that. So this is probably where we wanna, you know, keep our tablet layout and then let's duplicate that right next to this layout we could you know place our mobile version now this is super simple for those of you who have been designing desktop tablet and mobile versions of websites you definitely know how much time this saves and here's the important thing remember when assembling all these components if you've been watching this series I have always maintained a responsive version of all these components, even though it didn't really make any sense at that point. But as you can see, if, we, if you actually make sure that all these elements are responsive, then responsifying these layouts is super simple because then uh, you don't have to create a mobile version for this. You, simp you simply have one singular version. Of course, for more complicated components and more complicated layouts, you need to you know address each of those specifically but for simple layouts like this this is great so let me just add underscore tablet then underscore mobile under each of these and that's basically it i will probably hide this layout grid and this one as well because it doesn't really match anymore for this layout and i think we're done here so that's how you responsify a layout uh, with these new features you just go step by step you make sure everything is full container you need to think about minimum and maximum widths. You, of course, need to do some in-depth analysis of your layout and just try and see what works. And where it doesn't work, you simply think about what's the problem, like if it needs a maximum width, a minimum width, what's really the, uh, the issue, and then fix that, as usual, as with any design process. And of course, if you then, for example, um, decide that these spacings are too large for mobile, then what you want to do is then maybe, you know, specifically for uh, for each of these formats, you want to adjust these spacings, right? Because this doesn't make sense. I mean, you don't really need that much space. So you just adjust these values to whatever works. You maybe then create a system for your, your variable system for like mobile variables and all that. There's plenty of, plenty of things you can take advantage of with these new releases so yeah that's how you make a responsive page in figma definitely go and check out the whole series where we create all of this um, from scratch so go and check out that playlist thanks for tuning in and i will see you in the next episode of designing a website in figma